tonight we're talking all about a topic that is arguably one of the biggest problems in our society today, and that is estrogen dominance. Now, before I dive into estrogen dominance, it's important, uh, it's important again that you understand that um, the things that I'm going to talk tonight, tonight about are a little bit touchy for some people. If you've got kids around, you might want to shush them out of the room. Um, we keep the show family fun and clean, but there are going to be some things that I talk about. I just want to pre-warn you, if you've got kids in the room, you might want to just send them off to play somewhere else as we dive into tonight's topic. So estrogen dominance. For first of all, let's talk about what is that really estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance is when we're either overexposed to too many estrogens, meaning what we're producing internally, or we're overexposed to too many estrogens from synthetic or chemical versions of estrogen, what we take in exogenously. So things that we're exposed to from the outside world versus our own natural hormone production. But either way, an estrogen dominance occurs when the estrogen outbalances or overpowers or overacts some of the other sex steroid hormones and creates a plethora of different problems. I'm gonna shove up on the screen here for you a diagram that lists out some of the more common symptoms of estrogen dominance. So let's put that up on the board for you so that you can kind of get a feel for, you know, is estrogen dominance something you might be experiencing or something you might have experienced in the past? So number one, for many women, it's low libido. It's hair loss. It's poor sleep. You can develop dry skin. Um, you can also develop a regular cycle. So ladies, regular menstrual cycles, estrogen dominance can really influence the behavior of the menstrual cycle. It can, you can also, and it can cause increased cycles. So you can actually experience more frequent cycles. So shorter time frame, not a 28 day predictable cycle, but you know, some women that have estrogen dominance will experience a couple of cycles a month or will experience um, cycles more frequently than that 28-day interval that's very typical. Premenstrual symptoms as well. So we can kind of classify those into the same kind of category. PMS, premenstrual sy symptoms or syndrome. Um, and this could have everything to do with headaches during a menstruation cycle or bloating or irritability or mood swings hot flashes, like all those classic, what we consider, what many consider to be kind of the classic symptoms of even of menopause, but also of, of PMS. So like these symptoms can be manifestation of an estrogen dominance scenario. Another big one is weight gain. A lot of women with estrogen dominance will experience, especially fat storage around the central abdomen, what we call central adiposity, but in addition around the hips. So think about hips and waist. If, if you're struggling and you're putting weight on and you're not over consuming and you're exercising and doing everything and playing your part, like you may be suffering with estrogen dominance if the weight just won't come off from calorie control or from eating healthy. Uh, additionally, brain fog and lack of memory. These are symptoms. So poor, poor uh, cognition, Memory issues, you're losing memory. These are symptoms. Again, all of these symptoms of estrogen dominance. Guys, if you're paying attention, and you know, most of the stuff is, is related to women, but if we look at, you know, men, what are the symptoms in men? A lot of times we'll get something called gynecomastia, which is you'll start growing breast tissue. So if you've, you've ever seen a man actually start to grow what looks like female breast tissue, this is a sign of estrogen dominance in men. Men can also store excessive weight around the midsection when they're estrogen dominant. They tend to be weaker, not as strong. They tend to recover less in the gym. So poor recovery from workouts, weight gain as well. Very common for men as well as one other thing that happens then. These are like, think of these as manifest symptoms that you can complain of. But what some people experience is a, uh, an increase in skin manifestations. There's actually something called a cherry angioma 
cherry angioma is like a little red freckle that forms on the surface of the skin. And these are a hallmark sign of estrogen dominance. So if you find little red freckles starting to appear all over your skin, and you've got a lot of these other types of symptoms, then again, you may be suffering with an estrogen dominance scenario. Um, we'll also see estrogen dominance create thyroid problems. So it's, you know, I'm going to put something up here on thyroid. So like thyroid dysfunction, but it's not so much that the symptom of estrogen dominance causes necessarily the thyroid issue, but it's very common for these two to kind of go hand in hand and have overlap with each other. So it's very frequent that we'll see women with estrogen dominance also being uh, challenged by a hypothyroid scenario or a hypothyroid condition. So these are some of your biggest symptoms associated with estrogen dominance. Next, let's go into what actually causes estrogen dominance. I think this is a big one. This is the big important one because obviously if you're struggling with these symptoms, what what is it that's creating this struggle, right? And what can you do about it? So let's go into what causes the symptoms of estrogen dominance. So if we look at causes, well, one of the big ones, one of the big obvious ones is estrogen, duh, right? You're probably saying, no kidding, Dr. Osborne, estrogen. This is estrogen dominance. But how many of you have a history of birth control pill use? How many of you have a history of taking the pill or taking estrogen-based medications to um, either skip your cycles, have less cycles, or to basically overcome like a, a polycystic ovarian scenario, or to overcome some type of fibroids, or to overcome some type of painful menstruation. So raise your hand in the room tonight. Let me know. If you've taken estrogen, if you've got a long history of estrogen use, just say estrogen. Just type in estrogen. Let's find out who you are. So Estrogen use, prescription estrogen medications. Now, just so you know, studies show that five years or more of estrogen use from a drug perspective can increase your risk of heart disease, can increase your risk of stroke, can increase your risk of cancers. So keep that in mind. If you're younger, maybe you haven't had that five-year history yet, maybe you want to start thinking about whether or not this is something you need to do and have that conversation with your prescribing doctor. Uh, we're going to talk about some solutions here shortly. But estrogen Again, taking estrogen is a big one. Now, a lot of times when women have a premenstrual problem, the, the premenstrual problem I said earlier, symptomatically, can actually be caused by too much estrogen. And here's the funny thing is that when you go see a doctor, a lot of times they don't test you. They don't test your estrogen level. They don't test your estriol or your estrone or estradiol or any of the other forms of estrogen or progesterone for that matter. A lot of the times what happens is they just simply put you on estrogen and say, your symptoms sound like you need more estrogen and they put you on the drug. Well, you could have too much estrogen. The doctor gives you estrogen thinking it'll solve your PMS problem. What he's actually doing is he's driving a greater degree of estrogen dominance. So you have to be real careful. My advice to any of you out there uh, that are looking at potential for taking an estrogen is ask your doctor to measure your estrogen levels before you start taking it. Once you do start taking it, ask your doctor to monitor your estrogen levels because it's real easy to get into a state of estrogen dominance when you're adding prescription medications into the mix. Now, one of the other causes of estrogen dominance, chemical exposures. We'll talk more about this in a moment, but there are a number of chemicals in the environment that mimic estrogen. They're called xenoestrogens. So if you've ever heard that term, xeno estrogen. These are chemical compounds that act like estrogen when you absorb them into the body. They can interact with estrogen receptors, creating estrogen-like responses, and that can be a big, big problem. There's actually new research showing that some of these chemical estrogens for females create an increased risk for cancer, create an increased risk for heart disease, create an increased risk for a number of different problems, and for men, increase the risk. There's actually some studies that show that chemical exposures early in life during sexual maturation can actually shorten penis length, can actually cause androgen problems where young men are not forming the androgens that are necessary to create a masculinization of them. So they're not maturing sexually. And you know, there's some evidence that is, is pointing to the possibility that 
are these chemical estrogens creating men that are less manly and even potentially creating a, a sexual disorientation? So, you know, this is, I'm, I'll just be very, very clear. This is not me picking on the gay community. This is me just pointing out what we know in research and that these chemical estrogens for men can actually alter their androgen expression leading to um, a failure to mature characteristically the way men mature through steroid hormones. Excessive body fat is another cause. Now we said earlier that actually that gaining weight or weight gain is a symptom, but excessive body fat, and you could be skinny fat, excessive body fat can actually cause excess estrogen. And one of the reasons why is if you have too much body fat, there's an enzyme in body fat called aromatase. And what happens is this enzyme converts testosterone and androgens into estrogen. So the more body fat you have by percentage, the better your fat cells are at creating a, a estrogen from the androgens. And you don't want that type of scenario because these two kind of self feed, right? When you have excessive body fat, and you create too much estrogen, then you start gaining weight. And that weight gain creates a greater degree of excessive body fat. And this is why one of the best solutions, you know, kind of one of the best interjections, if we're talking about like, what can you do about it, is actually weight training. Weight training, not cardiovascular, running on a treadmill or riding on a bicycle for hours, but actually physically lifting weights to improve your muscle mass to reduce your body fat composition. Another big cause here, is excessive carbs, but particularly refined sugar. We know that refined sugar, because of its impact on insulin and cortisol, what this does is it leads to hormonal changes that drive up estrogen. So excessive carbohydrates, um, again, through that hormonal change of insulin and cortisol can actually create this scenario as well. We've got another one, and, and this one's going to ring true to a lot of you, and that's high stress lifestyle. So increased stress, and I'm not talking about the acute stress where you know you have a problem, you know, for one day. I'm talking about living stress every day, living out high, high long term chronic stress. Chronic stress does the same thing to your hormones that cortisol does, um, and that I'm sorry that refined carbohydrates do. So that chronic stress increases cortisol, insulin, causes elevations in blood sugar, and starts to impact and affect the way that you produce your hormones, creating can create an estrogen dominance scenario. And then another big one that we'll add to this list, and uh, you'll see there are a couple of stars by it, and that's gluten. I have seen this time and time again. Women come to my office, men too where they have a, a, a kind of a hallmark classic layout of estrogen dominance types of problems and symptoms. And we measure, you know, always measure hormones when we start out. What we see is we see a, a huge disparity between estrogen and progesterone. There's actually estrogen dominance is one of two things. Either it means you're making too much estrogen or you're getting too much artificial estrogen or you're making normal amounts of estrogen, but you're not making enough progesterone. And so there's an imbalance. Remember, estrogen and progesterone balance each other out. And that happens uh, that low levels of progesterone, normal levels of estrogen can also create an estrogen dominant scenario. But I have seen gluten play out time and time again, where somebody has a gluten sensitivity and gluten is creating a disruption of their hormones leading to an estrogen dominant state. And when we remove gluten from the diet, we see a full correction in that. So if you have not yet explored the no grain, no pain lifestyle, if you haven't checked out my book, if you haven't like applied the diet and you're struggling here, this would be one of the best places that you can start is start with diet change first. And so avoiding that gluten because it's a major, major factor. That's why I put it on the list of the things that we know can cause estrogen dominance. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.